Welcome back to the stock portfolio update videos. Currently, my two stock portfolios sit at a combined value of over $80,200. This is made up of the 47,946 in my US stake portfolio and the 32,331 in my Vanguard portfolio. Having a quick look, you can see that my US portfolio is up 33.48% or $12,025. My Vanguard portfolio has also been performing well as one of my, as my biggest holding VGS has been up and is now trading at $128 a share and is sitting at over $18,000 in value now. Overall, since my last update, I was sitting at $78,000 last week and I'm now over $80,000, which is another mark that I've hit as I continue to get closer to that $100,000 mark. Overall, there's a bit of news to get through today with one of my holdings, JP Morgan, which is actually up big, 4.44% as the bank had positive earnings, which I'll go through. Also, we'll also go through Tesla, which had a massive drop today. Um, if you have a look at its stock, it's down nearly 9% um, after some disappointing events. First, we're gonna just give a quick update of how the portfolios are looking. So you can see all my holdings are still the same. Um, Apple, Amazon, Costco, Google, JP Morgan, which is what we'll cover, and Microsoft, and my biggest by far, VOO, which tracks the S&P 500. And overall, in my Vanguard portfolio, nothing's changed either, um, just VLC and VGS, and I did invest $500 more into VGS. I do have some pending distributions, so that means I have some dividends um, that are still gonna be paid out. I should get a bit more as well. Um, but that's the first lot, which I plan on just reinvesting into my portfolio. First, we're gonna go through this JP Morgan news as the shares pop 5% after topping estimates on a better than expected interest income. JP Morgan Chase posted third quarter results that topped estimates for profit and revenue as the company generated more interest income than expected. JP Morgan said profits fell 2% from a year earlier to 12.9 billion, while revenue climbed 6% to $43.32 billion. The biggest American bank has thrived in the rising interest rate environment, posting record net income figures since the Fed started hiking rates in 2022. JP Morgan posted third quarter results that topped estimates for profit and revenue, and the earnings was $4.37 a share versus the $4.01 a share that was estimated, and the revenue of $43.32 billion versus the $41.63 billion. So they smashed out their expectations. Even with them saying profit fell, um, they still managed to increase revenue. Net interest income rose 3% to $23.5 billion, exceeding the $22.73 billion um, that was estimated on gains of investments at securities and loan growth in its credit card business. CEO Jamie Dimon touted the firm's quarterly results in a statement, while also addressing regulators' sweeping efforts to force the bank to hold more capital and expressing concerns about the rising geopolitical risks, saying that conditions are treacherous and getting worse. We believe rules can be written that promote a strong financial system without causing undue consequences for the economy. He's pretty much just going through, giving a general update. Um, the bank's results also helped Wall Street's divisions. Investment banking fees climbed 31% to $2.27 billion in the quarter, exceeding the $2 billion estimated. Overall, if you just read through in your own time, you can see fixed income was up, trading up. Everything seems to be in the green, um, hence the big, strong results for JP Morgan. But they also do mention consumers are fine and strong footing and increasing in reserves was because the bank is growing its book of credit card loans, not because the consumer is weakening. When a bank is obviously posting these strong earnings in this high interest rate environment, it probably does mean the consumer is bearing a lot of those costs as someone who's worked for a bank. Um, but as a shareholder, I did actually sell out of around half my position in JP Morgan um, or a few of my shares. I do own uh, still 5.521 shares in it and I'm up around 72% so it's I'm up massive it's one of my best investments I've had um, and it's up 52% in the last year it's the only banking stock I hold 
but pretty much even in the last five years, it's up 91%. So if you've been invested in JP Morgan, you've got some really strong returns over the past time. And especially when I bought in, it was a really good time. So that's why I'm up 72% in well under the five years. That's why I did take some of my gains and I reallocated it to other holdings that I have, um, such as VOO, Google, other likes. But I still do hold a position in there just to help me diversify a little bit. Um, so I'm not too heavily weighted into tech. It's only 4%. Again, it used to be bigger, um, but I do need to diversify a bit more away because all my holdings are pretty much tech holdings. And with my next purchase, I do want to buy Amazon, which is another tech position. Um, but just with the growth that they've had, it's just so attractive to um, invest in these tech stocks at, at the minute. Having a look while we're speaking about tech stocks, um, having a look at Tesla, obviously not the best month for the stock, down 5.28%, horrible week, 12%, and still had a strong six months though. Having a look, you can see Tesla shares dropped 9% after the CyberCab RoboTaxi revealed underwhelming investors. Tesla shares fell Friday after the electric vehicle maker's long-awaited a robo-taxi event failed. CEO Elon Musk revealed the company's CyberCab concept vehicle and said consumers would be able to buy one for under a price tag of $30,000, um, but that didn't seem to get investors going. Tesla shares closed down nearly 9% on Friday, um, which is a bit rough, but they, Elon Musk said the company hopes to produce the CyberCab before 2027 but offered no details on where the cars will be manufactured. He said consumers would be able to buy it for under 30,000, which is quite cheap um, if then this ends up being the case. He said he expects Tesla to have unsupervised full self-driving um, up and running in Texas and California next year with the company's Model 3 and Y electric vehicles. Um, so that's positive to hear if you are an investor or you're someone who uses the product. The technology still requires a human driver at the wheel ready to steer or brake at any time. Um, closing at 217 on Friday, Tesla shares were down 12% year to date and 17% over the last 12 months. Yeah, it just didn't seem to hit um, where they were kind of hoping. And as someone who did actually, if you've watched this channel for a long time, I doubt anyone has because the most of the growth in the channel has been more recent. But really when I started investing, Tesla was one of the first shares I held. And if you have a look here, I actually managed to sell it pretty much at the top. So no skill of mine. It was mainly just, I wanted to get out of the position, sold at a really good time, made good fair share of a uh, chunk of gains at that time. I think I doubled my money and I got out and I kind of looking back now, I was really fortunate. I pretty much timed the market by not even meaning to. I thought it was quite expensive, but I just managed to get out at a really good time, take my gains and put them somewhere else. And that's been really beneficial for my portfolio. Because if you look since 2021, it's still not hit those highs that the stock was trading at. So that was a really good decision. Um, but Tesla is still a stock that gets a bit of a mixed reaction between communities. Some people love it. Some people don't really see the, the value proposition and think it's trading way too high. Um, again, it trades at a 61 PE ratio. But if we have a look at the analyst ratings, again, mixed bag, six saying buy, two saying hold, three saying sell, and all the price targets are a range of everywhere. You get some up here like Morgan Stanley and Deutsche Bank, and then you get some in the middle and you even get some at the bottom. So you need to do your own individual research on Tesla. I think a lot of it is the story. Um, again, that's one of the reasons I invested was because you hear a lot about the story, things like that. It's a very public company. Um, and yeah, I just managed to get out at a good time. And it's not really something I've looked at getting back into. I think you really have to have a long-term approach with Tesla. And at the moment, maybe in the future things change, but yeah, at the moment, it's not really somewhere where I'm looking to put my money right now. Having a look at the overall stock market, um, it's been a pretty good time for investors. The Dow jumped 400 points to a record on Friday and the S&P 500 closed above 5,800 for the first time. So overall, the indices are up. Everything seems to be in the green. If you're an investor and you've kind of had a long-term approach this year, um, you've kind of worn everything. You, the AI bubbles, 
things trading up, things trading down, um, but you've probably in the green for this year by a decent chunk, especially if you were invested into things like Nvidia or other tech stocks. And then even, even staples like Costco, which I hold and JP Morgan, actually some of my best performance. So no matter kind of where you've had your money, it's been a good year for most investors, especially building on last year, which was another good year. Um, 2022 wasn't as much, I believe. I remember I was in the red a lot, but yeah, overall my goal is still to get this portfolio, this Vanguard one to 35,000 before the end of the year, which I think I'm well on track to hitting. Um, I think, yeah, granted, hopefully the market is strong and helps me with the gains. That definitely helps. I can get this to 35,000 and I can get my US stake portfolio to 50,000. Um, again, it's going to be tough pushing this through the last two and a half months of the year, but that would be the goal. And that would obviously take me to hopefully around $85,000 in my between my stock portfolios which is again, getting me closer and closer to that $100,000 mark where a lot of people say it does slightly get easier with compound interest um, and my dividends will be bigger, things like that. I'll have more money to invest. And overall, it's been a real journey um, this last two years, especially um, as things have been in the green, just kind of tracking this portfolio. And if we have a look at my Excel spreadsheet, you can see here is the weightings. This hasn't been updated for my recent buys and this is all from like if you look at the balances here, that's from the very start of the month and I'm already in the green over a thousand dollars in my stake portfolio and my Vanguard pretty much. So you can basically add another two grand, but you can see this nice steady incline. Last month in my stake portfolio was actually the first month I've had in ages where it was actually down. And that's because I didn't put any money in and the market traded down. So it was on such a nice good run here before I had that little hiccup, but we're right back on track now. Like I said, we'll be up over a thousand five hundred dollars so we'll bounce right back up and trading in the right trajectory my vanguard on the other hand every month has just been up um, as i've been investing slowly slowly building and building and building it um, as you can see when i started it at the start of this year you just get the figures here the stake was at thirty two thousand. again it's nearly at forty eight thousand now and my vanguard was at twenty thousand eight hundred and it's at 32,000 now. So it's been a good year so far, and I just want to close it out with the same momentum. My dividends are getting bigger, my gains are getting bigger. Like I said, I think I'm up around 15 grand now in stocks, which is pretty good. Um, but I want to keep a long term approach uh, just so I don't get distracted in the short term. I want to build some wealth with this money. And again, my plan is to track it here um, across channels and things like that just to hold myself accountable and to show other people kind of my journey of doing it. Even my dividends here, you can have a quick look at uh, my stake and Vanguard ones. Vanguard obviously pays quarterly. So this month I'll be getting a dividend. Hopefully that 181 plus a little bit extra as well. And it'll put me um, big in the green. The goal was to get $1,000 in dividends this year. I think I just might miss that um, potentially, or I might just hit it depending on how things, how much is paid out. I'm not actually too sure how much I'll get, but I think Obviously I'll get $1,000 if you add up my stake ones as well, but just Vanguard alone, I might miss it. But if you add everything together, I'll be well over 1,000, which is another good goal to tick off. Even though I'm not a dividend investor, I just reinvest it all. And it's nice to rather have that money in my pocket. And it's nice having that extra bit of income for hopefully one day it can be a second income stream or a third income stream, that type of thing. This was just a quick video updating on one of my holdings, uh, JP Morgan and Tesla holding I used to have and just a bit of an update in my portfolio as of breaking that $80,000 mark um, which I've been working towards. Leave how your portfolio is doing in the comments and then I'll keep doing another update next week uh, just to see how we track closing this year. Thank you.